Hi everybody, I just wanted to show you guys this quick Guardian Duel tier list that I made. I promised you guys I'd make it a while ago, and here it is. And I'm just going to give my thoughts on each character. But before we go into that, I want to just kind of say the premise of this tier list. The, the rules that it follows, okay? Rule number one is that with each character, it's assuming that the person playing it knows what they're doing. Like... You know Ymir's kit well. You know that some of the tricks. You know you know the matchups. Or like let's say with Ares, you 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 know the matchups. Uh, you can hit your chains well. You know what I mean. And so that's assuming that uh, number one that you're you're pretty good with the god. You know what you're doing with it. You know you have some experience with duel as well with that character. Number two is assuming that you're against somebody that also knows what they're doing, and they're not going to be caught off guard by. Uh, by like some someone's damage or something like that you're not going to surprise them with it you might you know you might still kill them with it but they're not going to be surprised by it because they know that they, what they're up against they're no they know how to counter it and they know the tricks for that or whatever like for example tara uh you can always stun her out of her dash or with Ares, i mean you can juke his chains although you know it's kind of a battle of hey if you can hit your chains really well but your opponent's really good at juking chains uh what's gonna happen right but anyways yeah so it's assuming those two things that you're you're good with the character you know what you're doing and your opponent's also good and they know what they're doing and i i would say the third thing is that it's relatively high rank like like diamond plat i'm not gonna say gm because at gm it becomes a thing where like only 10 gods are viable so yeah, like like platinum diamond range okay so here we go let's get started ymir uh, just in, insane boxing potential with his auto attacks, you know, can box almost every opponent. He's really, really good at just go, clearing the wave and then going immediately and taking all the buffs on the map. Uh, I mean, it's partly, yeah, yeah no, uh, I, there's not really too much more to say than that. Great early game, great mid game. I mean, even great late game with uh, Diamond Arrow. Kuzumbo, he's been buffed so many times. He's actually really good in duel right now because of certain itemizations on him such as bumbo's hammer uh you can you know with blink you can pretty much fight any god doesn't matter what they have because you can just spam your ability so much and with bumbo's hammer in the late game even against gods that are running away a ton you can win against i mean kind of like my my game against that morgan lefay oh and also i guess i should add one more thing about this tier list is assuming you're banning gods that just completely destroy you like you're, you're doing some some good bands like you're not gonna let Poseidon through for example because you know Poseidon would destroy Kuzumbo so uh yeah, there's there's some some gods that you know certain matchups will destroy them but for the most part they're good like Kuzumbo and Ymir for the most part the matchups are good for them uh there's vi there's like some certain matchups that you know they'll lose to but for the most part they're pretty good all right let's continue on Fafnir very weak early game very hard to play but Again, if you know what you're doing, he can be pretty good. He's got a lot of late game potential. He can kill most gods in the late game. His weakness, I would say, is like super, super tanky gods. But even that, he can deal with, with the appropriate build and the fact that his one in dragon form shreds protections. So yeah, no, I feel like Fafnir is pretty solid. Uh, again, his weakness is his early game. Um, if I were to adjust him, I would maybe drop him down to A+. He's kind of like in between but it's hard it's hard to say because because i do really well on him i know what i'm doing with him uh but yeah yeah i i it's he's he's somewhere in between um sylvanas I, on this map currently in the current state of duel sylvanas is insane man like like i used to play sylvanas and think he was really bad and then i would kind of get better with him but he was still really bad I, it was just that i was really good with him but ever since mannequins and especially on this map specifically He's actually really good because against most hunters that build mannequins, you can hide behind minions. You can't do that against Savannah's. Savannah's does like three autos on the wave. The wave's cleared, and then he's smacking you with all this damage and CC, rooting you and the minions. Yeah, no, he's actually really good right now. And even in the like mid to late, uh, when you upgrade mannequins and going in a normal attack speed build with a ton of power behind it, yeah, no, he's he's actually good right now. Uh, which surprises me and yeah just just lots of success with him even in the late game one reason he's good is mannequins does physical damage and he's a magical god so even if your opponent tries to go something like double defense then the mannequins is still going to eat them alive 
So yeah, no, uh, really good. Athena, very good because of Bumba's hammer, and she can just kind of poke down the Phoenix if she's against someone. Tower sitting with Polly, Polly Bumba's hammer. Uh, once she gets Bumba's hammer online, it's honestly over for your opponent because you can just spam the, the abilities like crazy with the uh, reach autos. The reach autos make it really easy to proc Bumba's hammer. It has a big hitbox. Uh, yeah, no, it's just really, really good on her. Again, no ultimate, but Athena doesn't need it. You just don't level up the ult, you're fine. Uh, just get get through even the early game strong so it's not even get through the early game it's just you know pretty much most matchups she she can win with uh yeah no she's actually she's actually really strong it's it's really weird to say how sh that she is this strong uh but yeah okay and now we are at cthulhu cthulhu's oh he's all right uh, i feel like he does have a lot of bad matchups but when he's in a matchup that he's good in uh, I mean, he does just really well. The fear is good. The ultimate's really good for chasing down kills. It's like really, really good. His ult's amazing in certain matchups. In other matchups, it's bad for you. Like if you're against a hunter that can build chin size easily, his his ultimate's honestly not that good in certain in those situations because you just get shredded. So yeah, I would put Cthulhu higher, but he has a lot more bad matchups. So. Um, I put him a little lower. I could even move him down to A. Again, all of these have a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, they might be adjusted as well as I f think on it more. But I'm just giving my thoughts on each character. Okay, Ardeo. Ardeo's pretty good. Um, her 3 and Druid stance allows her to deal with range gods pretty easily because you can root them and then get right next to them hit them with the burst you know she's constantly using abilities if you've if you've never tried bumba's hammer on ardeo you should it's actually really insane on her not as good as kuzumbo uh but i mean you're never not using an ability with bumba's hammer and they're always right next to you you're always debuffing them while buffing yourself so it's 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 pretty good um i'd say she's probably one of the more well-rounded guardians in terms of like matchups uh, most of the matchups are like pretty okay for her. Like she doesn't have crazy good matchups. Well, she does, but she also like gets a lot of gods that other guardians suffer against. She actually does pretty decently, like the long range mages and stuff like that. So yeah, she's pretty well well rounded guardian. Kabraken, Kabraken's so high risk, high reward. Like at the beginning of the game, his he has no sustain at all, and he has to use all of his mana to clear the wave. But if he can survive through the early game, and I mean, funnily enough, he can also get a kill in the early game. Either way, if he could do that, then he can get ahead, get his items online, and then he's a beast. He's unstoppable. But it's also just as likely that you go to wave, can't clear the wave, and immediately die, and then you... You can't do anything the entire game. So he's, he's very hit or miss, very high risk, high reward. Um, so I would say he's he's A+. Plus. When he's good, he's really good. But when he's bad, you like go like 0-4 oh and, and there's like no chance of doing anything. Uh, Bumba's Hammer on him is pretty awesome. But I honestly don't recommend starting Bumba's Hammer in most matchups. Just because you need something, a different starter to kind of survive the early uh, if you think you can survive the early, then yeah, go Bumba's. Very good on him. Zheng Tian, another really well-rounded character. His passive actually helps out a ton with keeping him nice and healthy in the fights. His ultimate makes it so that like half of the gods he does really well against. Like If they don't have a CC mean alt, he's already got a, a good chance against them because he can just bait their beads and then uh, get a nice alt on them. And it, it hits really hard with a, prop, a proper build. So I'd say Jing Tian, very well-rounded character, good things about him overall, uh, but we're gonna put him A plus because he's not like the best, right? Like just because a matchup's okay for him doesn't mean that he's he's gonna be winning every match, right? Um, because again, it depends on your opponent. If your opponent knows what they're doing, they can deal with Jing Tian by, because they're not gonna waste their beats all the time, or they're, they're gonna position themselves in a place where they're safe even against blink alt you know if they don't have a way out so you know that's the kind of stuff i'm assuming with this tier list okay next is cerberus cerberus another well-rounded character he does well against uh any god with healing because of his passive of course he is really good damage with the two one uh i mean it can shred most gods get an early kill but he doesn't do too well against the hunters 
He doesn't do too well against the long range mages. I mean, even like warriors, like really tanky warriors, he can have some problems with. Um, as ultimate, similar to Jing Tian, but it's it's I think it's worse than Jing Tian's ult because um, I think it hits for less damage in total, but at least it's burst damage. So I would say Cerberus is like a A character. It's he's pretty matchup based, but not terribly so. And I don't know, your opponent can play around him for the most part. Also, if they have a stun, then, you know, you can't even use your two that effectively. So that's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, it's just, just an okay character. Geb. I actually like Geb more. I wanted to put him higher, but I figured uh, A is where he belongs. He, If you can get an auto attack build online with Geb, you can destroy. You can do super well. But also, it's... It's a little difficult in the early game if you're against a ranged god and they won't even let you walk up to the wave and use your two to clear, which doesn't even fully clear the wave. So it is a little rough in the early. I mean, yeah, a lot of matchups he, he struggles against. But if you're against a melee character, ooh, Geb does really, really well uh, with an, a proper auto attack build, uh, auto attack hybrid build. So yeah, I, I feel like Geb is middle of the road because, uh, again, He's bad against range gods, good against melee gods. And that's just a general rule of thumb, of course. Uh, there's a lot of exceptions for that. All right, Yorm. Yorm, had, I've had a lot of success with him lately. He's actually getting, he's actually getting buffed, and Gilded Arrow's getting buffed. So when that happens, I'll move him up. But that is not the case right now. He struggles a lot against like hunt, hunters. He struggles against characters with lots of escapes. And, I mean... He's, he does really well against melee characters. And I mean, with Gilded Arrow, he is a bully in the early game. But again, if your opponent knows to not just try to fight you in your auto attacks, in your empowered auto attacks specifically, uh, then it does get a little rough for him. So I'd say A-, minus, not not bad, but also not, not very good. Terra, uh, similar thing. Terra is actually, she has a huge amount of damage. She's... A lot of kill potential, but if your opponent has an escape and they just leap away or while you're using your ability, or let's say they they stun you when you're dashing, or let's say they put a wall up to block off your dash and then your dash goes on cooldown and you're a sitting duck, she's all of a sudden you just die. And that's how I feel about Terra. I personally... I, my Terra, I would say my Terra is way down here, right? Like, maybe, like, C. But I do know Terra's not the worst character in Duel. I mean, she's, she has that kill potential. She has she has the recipe for a win. But if you're against somebody that knows what they're doing, it's very difficult to make her work. And that's how I have always felt about her. I feel like A- is the most fair place I can put her. All right. Yamoja. I mean, pretty pretty okay. Uh, Yamoja, it's funny because like everything about Yamoja is good except her damage. Her damage isn't that good. It's been nerfed a lot. Uh, I mean, even if you use, if you're at full Omi and you spam your one, that'll make like maybe get your opponent down to half health unless they don't have defense. And with the proper build, and your opponent goes the proper build, it is really difficult. But she's got some tricks. You know, if you get a kill, you can use your minions. You can use your three to get the minions to your enemy Phoenix to take that. So that's good. Uh, she can, you know, alt off the lane and get a huge amount of damage with that as well. So that's good. And I mean, she's ranged, which is just good in of itself. So A minus, like kind of bad, but again, not terrible. Kumba. All right, here, here's where we're getting to the characters where you start to only win with these gods if you're against somebody like worse than you. Like if you have two players and they both are good and they know what they're doing then it's a little difficult to win with these characters you can but it requires a little bit of luck but kumba got some amazing strats on kumba with the slingshot on his one you know turning your camera to fire the minion in whichever direction you want huge amount of damage but his sustain's not good his early game is kind of mad because of the his cooldowns uh you have to use your escape to clear the wave which is bad because if you use your one and then your opponent has like some sort of CC and they just, you know, lock onto you. That can be bad. 
but yeah, I mean, with Sunder, Sunder, Sunder makes his damage so good. And again, he does have a really good combo, but it's just hard to make it work in a dual setting. He's also not great at clearing the wave and then going and taking a bunch of buffs. Uh, and that is unfortunately bad because that's going to make him fall behind. And yeah. All right, Ares. I'd say the biggest problem with Ares is, of course, his ultimate's not great in a dual setting. I'd say about half the gods have a CC immune ult, and the rest can just get beads. And you have to use your ult back-to-back -back twice. And again, the ult doesn't do add that much damage, like, let's say, Jing Tian's. Uh, it's mostly just the CC that's good, like pulling them into tower. And if your opponent knows, hey, I don't got beads, they're not going to walk up to your phoenix, you know what I mean? So, uh... That's kind of unfortunate. His chains, really good. His fire, really, really good. Good at clearing the wave, good at taking buffs. Um, but again, it's, it's, it is a, while you can say just hit the chains, right? Your opponent can also juke the chains. I mean, like, if they juke the first chain, that puts you in such a bad spot because you miss out on a huge amount of damage. And even if you're hitting all the chains, uh, if they go a little bit of a tanky build, uh, it, it becomes kind of difficult for Ares. And again, if your opponent has a stun, this is the big part why Ares I don't think is too good. If they have a stun and you use your chain and they stun you right before you use your second chain, all of a sudden you you know you you only get one chain off and that cuts your damage in like half. And they can all stun you out of the fire, but I don't think that's as good as stunning out of the chains. And yeah, just th there's a lot of things that add up. To, to my decision to put Ares in B tier. If you're against someone that can't juke chains, though, ooh, uh, you can put him higher because he does so much damage. And his two is pretty good at taking objectives with the minions. Uh, but yeah, just the rest of it is kind of unfortunate. So at the end of the day, in conclusion, it depends for Ares, but I do think he belongs in B tier. Now, Sobek, Sobek's one of those things where he does a little bit of everything. But in a dual setting, it's a lot of times it's not enough. Like, I've, I've got a lot of wins on him against melee characters, but against hunters, it can be tough. Like, let's say, let, let me paint you a scenario where your opponent's at, like, half health, and you go in to pluck them behind you, and then they just beads it. Well, now you're right in front of them, and they're holding left click and hitting you for a ton of damage, and you can use your 3 and 2 to try to back up, but at the end of the day, you're going to get take a ton of damage, you know what I mean? And yeah, you can ult, but then let if they have a leap, they can just leap out of it or try to time it right, you know? Like there's a lot of counterplay to Sobek uh, that your opponent can do that makes Sobek not that great. And his heal's okay as well. It's not amazing. I do like his anti-heal though. It makes him good against uh, a lot of gods with too, uh, too much sustain. Bacchus. Bacchus is actually in the same exact boat as Sobek, except I think Bacchus... In some ways, I might, I might move him to the left. I didn't really place these in terms of order. I just I just placed them in the tier. Um, I think Bacchus is a little bit better than Sobek just because of the Sunder and then doing all of his abilities at once. He has the burst damage faster than Sobek does. Sobek kind of has to, if he pops his ult instantly, it doesn't hit that hard. But, you know, with Bacchus, if you do 3, 2, ult, or alt 3 2. It's going to hit for a ton of damage either way. So, uh, yeah, no, pretty good. But again, Bacchus doesn't have any sustain in terms of healing. Uh, he he always needs some sort of MP5 to keep up with his, his mana, you know. And just does generally doesn't do too well against ranged gods uh, because you're leaping in, but then once your leap's down, you're having to juke away and you're just taking a ton of damage from auto attacks or whatever that range god does. So yeah, B tier. Now we get to Kepri and Ganesh. Kepri and Ganesh you will only win with if your opponent has never like has never seen the god in duel. Or they make a lot of mistakes. Like in my auto attack Kepri video, I won that game, but my opponent, the enemy boxer, did make a lot of mistakes that let me win the game, right? Like, he tried boxing me with my mannequins, and he shouldn't have. And he died because of it, because I had a lot of... I could just use all my abilities instantly. And that was the case for, a, like, that's the case for almost all matchups with these two gods. 
Ganesh has a really, really, really good combo where he alts and then uses three and it does more damage than almost all these characters. But it's so, so easy to avoid that you're almost never going to get the combo off. And secondly, even if you do get the combo off, then they could just pop beads. So you would have to hit the combo twice back to back with their beads down in order to get the kill, right? And against somebody that knows what they're doing, that's just very rare to happen. And that's why he, I put Ganesh in C tier. Like, he can clear the wave too, but it's like you clear the wave and then you can't do too much. I don't know. I just think Ganesh belongs in C tier or somewhere around here. But yeah, this is my Guardian tier list. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts on some gods because, of course, I think everybody has different inputs for certain gods. Um, like, again, I, I feel like this is pretty accurate. There's a little bit of wiggle room. Like, maybe Savannah should be a little bit lower. Maybe Fafnir should be a little bit lower. Uh, you know, stuff like that. But I think this is pretty accurate from my experience because I do play all of these gods and I do play them a lot. And I play them a lot against the OP gods. And I know. Sometimes with certain characters when I win, whether it was because my opponent like was throwing the game and they didn't know what they were doing, or whether it was because I was using the character to the the best I could. So let me know, know you guys. Maybe in the future I'll do a full tier list, but man, there's just so many gods. If I do do a full tier list, I don't think I can talk about every single god. Or maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll break it up into classes, like this will be Guardians. Then I'd do hunters, warriors, assassins, mages, and then I would just merge. <laughs> I would just merge them all into one tier list, and then make final adjustments. I don't know. That sounds kind of fun. All right, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.